took, I took an Ambien last night. I'm a little out of it. It seems like you took an Ambien this morning. Right. <laughs> well, I took an Ambien and then I slept for six hours, so. Is it supposed to be more than, isn't it like eight hours? Yeah. <laughs> so. Whatever. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, it doesn't would, seem like would, she's fine. Would, Oops, uh, I'm so frustrated by this. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. I'm in the BA Cook Kitchen, and today I'm making gor. Mm, I feel like that was gonna be a good one. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. We're in the BA Test Kitchen, and today I'm making gourmet combos. The last time I had combos, I was probably 12 years old. It was at Camp Thunderbird for Girls in Bemidji, Minnesota. I did indeed have a childhood, sort of. I don't remember them being that good, but I also kind of remember liking them. My recollection of a combo is it's kind of a pretzel-like, crispy little tubes filled with cheddar cheese. Like, sounds pretty good to me. This, to me, feels like the standard size and flavor. This one just says combos, stuffed snacks, cheddar cheese. Right, some combos, I guess, are cracker and some are pretzel -y. so we'll try both. It has that powdered cheddar cheese kind of scent. There's some light flakes of what I'm guessing are salt. Okay, right off the bat. Pretty good. There's a lot of sweetness in the cracker and in the filling itself. The cracker itself doesn't have a ton of character, but the, it's very crunchy and kind of tender. And that combination with a little bit of creamy, salty cheese. Come back to me, I've never eaten 10 of these. Maybe they won't be so good, but the first bite, I think these are great. That's not to like about combos. I'm getting more excited by the minute with this combo thing. Oh, Delaney. Oh, combo Claire. I just have a question. Like, yeah. people don't like talk about combos that much. No, it's the first world It's combos. not like out there in the culture. Yeah. But people like them, right? I mean. Like, there's, posi there's positivity. Good people like them. They're the world's best gas station snack. Ah, uh, how come no one talks about combos? Everyone talks about Cheez-Its. Maybe you're hanging out with the wrong fish. people. What's your favorite kind? Uh, I, I mean, pizza uh, is the classic. It's so good. Andy doesn't seem busy ever. Andy. I have no idea what these are. They are tubular pretzel and crackers filled with cheddar cheese. And they're... Well, I've had that before, you know. When, I, when I, have you had them that wasn't a combo? They look a little like dog treats. Why mm. I took a bite. Sorry. They don't mm. taste like it. That I know of. I like these. It's like kind of good. It's like Italian seasoning and... And like tomato powder, tomato powder and like ranch powder. Yeah, no, this is good. When you bite in them, they are crunchy, but they almost become like a little like, a little too brittle and dusty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I want it to be a little bit more snappy. Uh huh. No, 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 no. You got it. Make sure you get the filling in with it. No, I got a little. I, I could maybe use a touch more so of the filling. Dry. Yeah. I just need like more balance. Like mm -hmm. even just the pretzel itself is just like. It's so crumbly. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it has like real snap. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. now, I think the the only thing that's distinctive about the cracker part is that it's sweet. My hope is that the dough is the same for the pretzel and the cracker, and they're just doing like a, a pretzel. You know, they're just treating it to get the shiny brown outside. I think it's gonna be kind of fun. I think I already have I think some you're ideas. Do great. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there was no leavening agent in here at all. It just puffs because of the water content. Looking at the cut surface of the tube, I actually think that they're baked individually. Initially, I was thinking like, okay, they're in, it's in, being made in a factory. Maybe it's being baked in a long tube and then cut. But actually, I think the first time that the cracker part gets baked, it's already in this length. And that's because of the uniform color around the cut sides. If they were baked and then cut, it would look more like this. It would have a, a very distinctly cut surface. Here's the pretzel kind. I'm gonna compare it side by side to one of the cracker ones. It might be that the cracker filling is a little more yellow. I guess it does look like it's a slightly different dough and slightly different consistencies. Now it's time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. Wheat flour, vegetable oil, parentheses, palm kernel oil, palm oil, corn oil, hydrogenated palm oil, and or hydrogenated palm kernel oil, close parentheses, whey, maltodextrin, sugar, modified cornstarch, salt, less than 5%, bakers, and cheddar cheese blend, parentheses, milk culture, salt, enzymes, close parentheses, leavening, parentheses, baking soda, sodium acid, pyrophosphate, close parentheses, dextrose, soy less than, coloring, parentheses, yellow five, lake, yellow six lake, blue one lake, close parentheses, hydrolyzed corn gluten, natural flavor, lactic acid, yeast extract, lactose, buttermilk, Acid. Hmm. So in in the dough itself, it's mostly wheat, flour, and oil. Sugar is pretty high on the list of ingredients, and then it does have a little bit of leavening. That's interesting. 
there's some good basic information here. It all makes sense, but I do want to go over to the computer to really see if there's any information about inside the factory and how they're made. This is a very short Wikipedia page. I'm concerned by the lack of information and transparency around combos in the internet. This can't be right. It says, apparently, this guy is saying that a bunch of guys with handheld caulk guns load the cheesy <laughs> filling into the hollow pretzel bits tens of thousands of times every day to a high degree of precision. No, there's no way. That's, that cannot be right. But this says combos were developed from a patent purchased in the late 1970s. So maybe there's like some highly secret proprietary information. I wasn't anticipating not finding anything out. So it makes the job a little bit harder on the one hand. On the other hand, it maybe makes it a little easier because I'm not, I don't have a particular set method or approach in my mind that I feel like I have to stick to. I can kind of make, you know, go anywhere with it. So my plan is to make a basic cracker dough and then to take some of that dough and treat it pretzel style to make that shiny brown outside and try to form it and, and bake it into tubes. I'm gonna start with the dough. I'm gonna start out with flour. Oh, I'm gonna add some buttermilk powder, why not? Cornstarch, maybe 15 grams sugar. We're gonna do five grams salt. It's gonna do a little bit of baking powder. Now all of these dry ingredients are gonna go into the mixer. And for the liquid, it's gonna be a combination of water and oil. Maybe I'll use an, a mixture of avocado oil and refined coconut oil. I I'm so frustrated by this. No scales work on this station. They all go all over the place. All right, we're gonna go measure this over there. Oh, it no, it's still... Nope, it doesn't, it still doesn't work. I think that the light pack does something. Because when I took my You think it's me? And weighed my stuff, it was working. Wait, Sola, I'll stand over here and you, and I'll tell you what to measure out. <laughs> Is it seem like it's working? Nope, break it out. There goes that theory. Let's try a different scale. It's working, it's, working. it's you. Okay. What are you going for? Can you just pour and I'll tell you when to stop? Is this how what is, what does 50 grams look like? It's 54. <laughs> Can you add 25 coconut oil to that? Okay. Then I'm gonna add it all and just start mixing. I do want a pretty dry dough. I'm basically just gonna knead it. Yeah, I think I do have to add more water. Do you know what I'm gonna do next? What I'm gonna say? This dough has to rest. Today's really looking up. I took a power nap, I had a coffee. When Gabby just gave me a piece of mortadella and I have a seltzer. It's a great day and it's a holiday party later. <laughs> yeah, totally. What? No, you're doing great. Keep, keep, keep going. Okay, cool. Here's the dough that's been resting. It's a little greasy. I okay, added kind of a lot of oil. I'm gonna try rolling it out and just baking off a slab of it to see what the texture is like. Oh, Brad, do we have any metal? Yes. Do we have any metal straws? Metal straws? Yeah. No, I don't know. Ask Gabby. What do you need straws for? to form a hollow tube of dough. Isn't that a bit thin? Or um, like uh, not a big enough circle? It's the inside. Right. All right, never mind. Let me ask Gabby. This little length of the dough on this short little parchment sleeve. I'm gonna try to form the dough around the straw and use it as a mold. This is the seam. I mean, it, the, the edges meet together, but it just doesn't want to really pinch to itself. This should have been my technique the whole time. This is making it really even. I just had that thought I always have during gourmet makes, which is what if I nail it on the first try? I'm trying to really grip this parchment paper. Oops. All right, I'm gonna bake it, see what happens. Here's my other idea. So these two tubes, we've used them now several times in gourmet makes, fermentos, and I don't remember the last one. They're just metal molds. And I slid the whole parchment wrap tube of dough inside and that's to help keep a round shape so it doesn't settle onto to a flat surface as it bakes and I'm gonna pop it in the oven. All right, I'll come back in 10 minutes and check. Now what I'm looking for is just the heat of the oven to set the dough. The dough is so insulated and, the, and there can't be a lot of moisture loss because of that, so let's see. It doesn't look bad. It did shrink a bit, so those where the seam was, it pulled away from itself a little bit. It kind of worked the first pass. So I only wanted to bake the dough enough to set it and have it be sliceable, and then I'm gonna bake it again. Here's my little pale dough bits. I wish the hole were a little bit bigger. 
And obviously it's not centered, so I'll, I'll do a better job next time of forming it around the straw. But before I try to adjust the dimensions, I do want to put them back on a baking sheet and put them in the oven until they fully bake through. All right, all right, they're looking kind of golden. I think maybe they need to be baked at a lower temperature, but let's just see. I mean, they got a little bit, a little bit golden. They actually got kind of little grill marks the way that actual combos have. And actually this, one thing I didn't really notice when I was looking at them is there's kind of a seam right here. They all have a seam. Wow, I didn't even really pay attention to that. I wasn't really doing my job earlier. They have a seam, now I know. It's pretty plain tasting. Not bad, just a little bland. Okay, grab out my, grab my notebook again. I'm gonna make some changes to the dough formulas. I'm gonna double the sugar. It really is surprisingly sweet. And then the baking powder, I'm gonna increase to five grams. I'm gonna do everything else, and I'm gonna put it together in the mixer. So here's the dough. Didn't quite come together in the mixer, same as last time. All right, now I'm afraid actually we're, we are gonna have to let it rest because it, it, it's just not gonna roll so well. Have done this yet? What is that? Oh, you have to play with it? Uh-uh. I know, but I want to know the name of it. Oh, my God. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Yeah, no, no, this is not, that's weird. That's this. this. Yay! Yay! 25 seconds, I will say. Did I get an A? You got an A. You got an A. Yay! We're the only, we're the only people under 30 yes. seconds. Yes. It's wow. So yeah. You guys, this is the most the fun thing I've ever oh, played with. I know, you should have seen. I love when I'm good at stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Ooh, that was fun. Okay. All right. The dough is hydrated. <laughs> so I'm going to use that same technique that I was using before where I create leverage with the parchment paper to compress and even out the thickness of the pastry. So this is Baker's twine. It's a, I, th I think it's probably like cotton. I'm trying a thing. So here's my idea. I'm going to make pre, I'm going to pre-cut Oh, so you're gonna like score it? Or like yeah. cut it completely? I'm gonna cut all the way through. So just make sure the twine is positioned that I'm pulling fully, fully parallel. So I'm pre-cutting the combos so that they look more like combos, I guess. Like they <laughs> like they have too much of like a cut face when I do this after the baking the first time. And now I'm wow. wrapping it back up, putting it in the molds and baking it. Instead of taking them off of the straw. I'm going to leave them on the straw, but just separate them because part of what's happening is as they bake without the straw, they're kind of closing up into that space and I don't want that to happen. I want them to have the full area of the straw cut out, if that makes sense. And now I'm gonna bake it again at a slightly lower temp and then I'm gonna play with that toy again because it's like, it does something in my brain. Okay. Hold on. This one is uh, okay. Now, now I hate it. Now I hate it, <laughs> and I don't want to use it ever again. Here they are. They look good. They got evenly golden. Using that method where they baked the second time, still on the straw, it did a good job of keeping a really sharp cylinder through the center. I think that's the outsides are a little thick, so next time I would roll the dough thinner before I wrap it around the straw. So, what a great day. It was so fun. Just like good energy. Where's that toy? So that thing until it's time to leave. So I don't know what happened to the combos that I actually cooked last night, but this is the same dough. Let me just roll it out. I wonder if a pasta roller is a way to go. Well, that go? I, not great. It just shredded the dough into tiny pieces. Okay, I just had an idea based on the pasta roller. What if, instead of trying to roll a single uniform thickness of dough around the straw, I roll, I spiral around the straw a super, super thin layer of dough until I get the thickness that I like all the way around. Then I just trim it off and bake it. Because the combos kind of have layers. That's what I was thinking about last night. Like, take a look at this. Not like, not, not like I think that's how they're doing it, but like these kinds of flakes and everything. I sort of like that idea, but it does mean I have to come up with a dough that has some extensibility and elasticity. What I might do is keep the same recipe and then add the water first, and then really try to work it. I'm increasing the amount of water, and I'm not adding sugar, I'm adding honey, and I haven't added the fat yet because I want the liquid to hydrate all the flour first. Oh yeah, that's dough that rolls. Plan is to wind it around the straw 
until I get to the overall thickness of dough that I like, and then to use that same cutting and forming method as before. It still feels pretty soft. This dough, because of the higher amount of hydration, probably will need to bake longer. The dough has really fused together, so now I'm gonna go back in, cut them again, and pull the pieces apart. Ooh, they look so smooth and good. So they're very off-center. I'll, I'll use a different forming technique, but I really like the way that these look. I think good progress from today and today, and from yesterday and today. Each time it seems like it's getting a little better. Wow, it's really good. It's very light in the way that a combo is light. Wow, it's very similar. The cake flour makes a big difference. It is a much lighter textured cracker. This would benefit from a seasoning coating on the outside like these have. I think this needs more salt in general, like a lot more salt. Good, I know, I know what I wanna do next. I'm gonna make another batch of dough with these tweaks. So I'm working one piece at a time. I'll keep the rest of these covered. I made it much thinner so that I wouldn't have such a dramatic difference in thickness all the way around. And actually, it looks good to me. It really does. Did I forget to add baking powder to this dough? I think I did. Also, it's too salty. I think I have to start over on the dough. But maybe it's just a good time to stop. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's three o'clock after now. Same thing, but doing it right this time. Oh, they look great. See, these definitely puffed. All right. I think these look great. This, to me, is the best version yet. The, the, whole, the whole is pretty well centered. They look a lot better. They're very smooth. The color is nice and uniform. They also have nicely placed centers. They're pretty in the middle, which is good. And that was just a matter of rolling the dough thinner and wrapping it more times. That worked out really well. I think they, they look super combo-y. Oh, my God, look at it. So crackery and good. So flaky, mmm, very light, well seasoned. I love combos now. Yay. This feels like a good time to end the, this day. <laughs> At this point, the hard part's over. I'll kind of smoothly sail the ship into the port on day three. Is there any danger in talking like this? No. It's gonna be fine. The only thing is you're gonna have to all remind me what I did because I'm not gonna be back here for a while. All right, it's a whole new year. What day is today, the second? It's the second day of 2020. I barely remembered what we had started, but it's combos. Now it's all coming back to me. Today, I'm going to focus on production, making more of these, turning some into a pretzel coating. I'm not literally making pretzel dough because there's like yeast involved and I'm not gonna go through that whole process. I'm just using the same cracker dough, but I do want to create a shiny, very browned pretzel coating on the outside. And there's a couple different ways to do that. One is to use baking soda to make baking soda more alkaline, which then makes it more effective in creating the pretzel coating. You have to bake it at a low temperature and there's some kind of molecular change that happens. So even though I don't really understand that full transformation, I do know that I want to get some baking soda baking in the oven because it takes about an hour. It will make it strong enough to irritate, so then we'll have to handle it carefully. Remind me to not touch this with my bare hands after it comes out. Before I start putting together the, the actual doughs, I think I want to make a couple of spice mixes that I can use to flavor the different doughs. I guess I want one of them to be kind of like an Italian-ish type seasoning, and then the other one to be maybe more like pretzel-y kind of seasoning, like with mustard powder. In both cases, though, I'm starting with a base of buttermilk, so let me add that. Now in each of these, cayenne, onion powder in both. For the pretzel flavor, garlic powder, ground mustard, paprika, cheddar powder. I'm gonna shake this up and then give it a taste. Tastes really good. Now for the Italian seasoning one, I have Parmesan powder, tomato powder, dried oregano, whole fennel seed. Mmm, really good overall. I'm happy with how each of the blends turned out. So let me label these. I'm gonna make the two versions of dough. So 
So this one is za, for pizza. And this one is L for pretzel. So I have my doughs here. They had a long time to rest. And now I'm gonna roll them out in my pasta roller. That looks great. Thanks. It looks kind of shitty and industrial and like it doesn't have a soul, but it's like, it's perfect. But in a good way. But in a good way. Then it bakes like that. Why does it bake in the cannoli form? Just so that it doesn't get a flat side as it bakes. It stays really round. I know, so I know. It's just that next level where I would be like, Fuck it, it's gonna have a flat bottom, but we all can imagine what it would look like without the flat bottom. Yeah. But you take it that next little bit. Thank you. And it's just, oh, wow. Well, we gotta make our own fun, I'm you know? I'm so impressed. Thank you. I would say I haven't broken a sweat on this one in general. Wow. What I wanna do next before I make any more of this flavor is figure out the baking soda solution for making a pretzel coating. So I'm gonna to pivot to that while these are in the oven. So I just went back to that Harold McGee article about the baked baking soda. The proportion that he gave was about 100 grams. What? Oh, right, I forgot. It's fine, <laughs> nothing's happening so far. All right, so I make a solution, dissolve the baking soda in the water. Wait, did it, did it vaporize? Oh no, really? Everyone stand under the hood. And then I dip the unbaked dough into the solution, let it sit there for three or four minutes, dry off the excess, and bake it, and it should get that burnished, shiny pretzel coating look. I'm sorry, does that say 450 degrees on that? How hot is this top oven? 350, this is a oven that's 100 degrees off. That's actually a very beautiful color. I wonder if I need to egg wash for shine. They don't smell that pretzel-y. <laughs> So these are the two, it's the same dough. The one on my left, your right, got that dip, that dunk in the baking soda solution. So obviously it changes the color dramatically. The color looks good, it looks pretzel-like, but I am going to try, before I put them in for the second round of baking where they dry out, brushing them with a little bit of egg white to encourage a shiny finish. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Well, how done is too done? How burnished is too burnished? I think they look incredible. I'm gonna go with they're not burned and they look amazing. Look at that. Look at that pretzel coating. Is anyone else showing my enthusiasm? Do we think that they're too dark? Because it tastes very pretzely, but then you have all like the Italian seasoning. It's like kind of weird. I think that next time I have to do less of a soak. I'm gonna cut it in half and do two minutes. Ooh, they got a little dark. Uh-oh. Well, so much for my less time theory. But like, I'm actually surprised at how well the baking soda works. Are you sure these won't burn your organs? No, no. But I'm sure they're safe. So we have Italian, pretzel Italian, savory and pretzel savory. It smells really good. I'm very happy with the flavor. The pretzel thing worked better than I thought it would. Overall, the shapes of all of them look very even and combo-like, and I'm very pleased. No day three curse, and I know that we'll wrap it up tomorrow. No one got burned from chemical solution of baking soda. So I was going home last night, and I had been reading about the baked baking soda and how to pretzelize something. <laughs> I didn't read <laughs> the last sentence, <laughs> which said to rinse it after you soak it and before you bake it. So that explains why they got really, really dark. And <laughs> it's a little bit of a question mark whether or not these are acceptable to eat. I ate two of them yesterday, I felt fine. <laughs> but I just don't wanna do it again is what I'm trying to say. Right? It's probably okay. I think it's probably okay too. Brad would probably eat it. Yeah. You know? Would you eat it? I'd wait 24 to 48 <laughs> hours after, after Brad I ate it. it. Okay, all right. So what I hear is I'm not redoing it. I don't think so. That was the answer I was looking for. Yeah, Thank no. you so much. In conclusion, Chris said it's fine. I'm, I'm gonna put these into the dehydrator while I then focus on making the filling, filling the combos, and then tasting.
What's that? No. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. Whoa. <laughs> that, was, that was too much. <laughs> that was too much. That was too frantic. This is a block of aged cheddar, 18 month. I think this is a good place to start flavor-wise. I'll do a plain cheddar flavor. Then instead of jalapeno, what if I do Calabrian chili, which is very gourmet. For the pizza, instead of pepperoni, I make an Induya filling. Induya is a type of spreadable Italian sausage and it's spicy and it's delicious. That is really gonna upgrade our homemade combos. So I like the idea of more of like a spicy mustard, maybe some Dijon, maybe some horseradish or something like that with the cheddar. Ooh, Cupy. My approach is to make one single kind of plain cheddar cheese mixture in the food processor and then divide that into three and then just kind of stir in the flavors for the three kinds of fillings. Oh, you know what I want? Cream cheese, obviously. That is the obvious choice. That's going to be a great base. QP mayo, which is just us. And then soy sauce, the cheese, little by little, cheddar cheese powder and parmesan powder. Collaborating chili oil and garlic powder. Tastes incredible. So it looks like I have about 300 milliliters. So I'm gonna start with the mustard flavor. I'm gonna put in a third of this mixture. This is the savory seasoning mix. This is Coleman's mustard, so English style mustard. It really packs a punch. Now a bit of the horseradish mustard. I also wanna add a tiny bit of very, very, very finely chopped scallion. All right, I think it's not quite spicy enough, so I'm gonna add a pinch of cayenne to this. Okay, mustard is done. The next cheese I'm going to do is Calabrian chili, which all I'm gonna do is finally chop up some of these chilies and then blend them into the next third of the cheese mixture. It kind of hits you on the finish and it's subtle. It's not, it's, these are not incredibly hot chilies, but it's incredibly delicious. Okay, so here is an unopened Induya. So it looks like salami, but then it has a very, soft consistency and smooth, so just like that. I'm gonna put this into the food processor. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit of the pizza flavoring into it also. Just a little bit though, I don't want it to be overpowering. There's just not enough in the food processor to get the Induya to incorporate, so I'm gonna do it by hand. I'm just gonna work it in with a spatula. And then I'm gonna very, very, very finely dice some of the pepperoni and put that in, so there'll be little tiny cubes of pepperoni in the filling as well. All that finely chopped pepperoni is in here. I think this looks good. I'll give it a little taste. Very, very good. I'm really happy with the flavors of all of them. So these will go now into the refrigerator to set up a little bit before we pipe them. Last thing will be filling and tasting. Hopefully no one dies from the pretzel. I'm gonna grab the crackers from the dehydrator. It smells very good. They look great. Okay, so I picked out this pastry tip. I'm gonna fill it like I would fill a cannoli if you've ever seen that done. I decided that I'm actually just going to fill I'm gonna make every combination possible. So there'll be 12 total, because three fillings times four different shells. Uh, do you think, are we gonna have to label these, do you think, so I'll know what's what? It's getting complicated. This is all the arts and crafting I get to do in this episode. I enjoyed that. So I'll start with savory pretzel plus spicy mustard. Just savory plus spicy mustard. And then Italian pretzel. Spicy mustard. Wait, it looks so similar. Look, almost the exact dimensions. Same color filling. Okay, now I'm gonna go on. I'll do the Calabrian chili. And also, my favorite part of this so far is just the plate. The second filling is done. I just couldn't be more into this whole symmetry and everything. I love it. I'm making a twister board so that people can spin the wheel to figure out which one they're gonna try. Chris. No, no. <gasps> it works. <laughs> Yay. Okay. What do we call this? One, two, three. Wheel, wheel of combos. combos. <laughs> We really gotta make our own fun on this show. Ooh, okay, good one. Savory pretzel and spicy sausage, that's a good one. We think you're gonna be fine if you eat it. <laughs> this is by far better than any combo I've ever had. Thank you. I wish the bar was higher, but thank you anyway. <laughs>
Yeah, just a quick, oh, there you Ooh. go. Ooh, good one. Ooh, okay. it's in the middle. You got savory and spicy sausage filling. Okay. <laughs> Why, they, look, they look exactly, they look better. Thanks. It's so good. They look like a mandala and it's prosperity. Now so. it's a board game. Okay. Ooh, you won. You got the one where there's only one left. Italian pretzel and Calabrian chili. Mm-hmm. Chris, just eat the whole thing. He takes a bite. I know, I know it. I'm watching. Chris Wait, can I see? Can I see the the bite part? Oh, see, that looks pretty good. Can you show the camera? Oh, it's so good. Like Wait. delightful. It's like pasty. It's creamy, but the shatter to that pretzel, and it even tastes like a pretzel. Like it really has that mm. snap on the outside. Mmm, the monster. Oh my god. I'll save you the time. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. They look great. I think the pretzel ones look much more appealing than the pretzel originals. And overall, it was a lot of fun. I used a lot of different techniques, a lot of fun equipment, and I got to make this little board, this little combo game board. I think combos more than the average gourmet makes. I could simultaneously nail the look and make it just much higher quality than the original. You can't always achieve both, but I think in this case, it was kind of easy on both counts. So that is certainly a win. Here's how you make gourmet combos. Bake baking soda at 275 Fahrenheit for an hour to alkalize it, then let cool. Dissolve two thirds of a cup of baking soda in two cups of water and set aside. To make the savory powder, combine two tablespoons buttermilk powder, two tablespoons ground mustard, two tablespoons cheddar powder, two teaspoons onion powder, two teaspoons paprika, one teaspoon garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper. Set aside. To make the Italian seasoning powder, combine two tablespoons buttermilk powder, two tablespoons Parmesan powder, one tablespoon tomato powder, two teaspoons onion powder, two teaspoons powdered dried oregano, and two teaspoons ground fennel seed. Set aside. For the dough, combine 240 grams cake flour, 10 grams kosher salt, 15 grams cornstarch, 8 grams baking powder, and 30 grams savory or Italian seasoning powder in a bowl. Make a well in the center and pour in 100 grams water and 30 grams honey. Mix just to hydrate, then add 50 grams avocado oil. Eat until the dough is smooth, then cover and let the dough rest for 10 minutes. Roll out small portions of dough in a pasta roller until very thin. Dust lightly with flour as necessary to prevent sticking. Then cut into rectangles measuring about 8 inches across and 2 and 3 Three quarter inches wide. Tightly roll the dough around a straight metal straw, then use thin thread to pre-cut the length of dough into crosswise segments. Dip some of the tubes of dough in the baking soda solution, then place the straw seam side down in a metal cannoli tube, then set on a wire rack in a small room baking sheet and bake at 350 Fahrenheit until the dough is set, about 10 minutes. Cut along the same cuts you made with the thread and separate the lengths of dough, sliding off the straw onto the rack, then bake again until the dough is light golden and dry all the way through, about 15 minutes. Set aside to cool. To make the cheese filling, process four ounces cubed room temperature cream cheese, a quarter cup QP mayonnaise, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon soy sauce, and a food processor until very smooth. Add three ounces grated white aged cheddar cheese, five tablespoons yellow cheddar powder, three tablespoons Parmesan powder, a half teaspoon Calabrian chili oil, and garlic powder to taste, then process until very smooth. Divide the mixture in thirds. To a third of the cheese filling, stir in savory seasoning, Coleman's mustard, horseradish mustard, finely chopped scallion greens, and cayenne pepper to taste. To another third, stir in very finely chopped Calabrian chilies, and to the final third, stir in softened and duya Italian seasoning powder and finely chopped pepperoni. Transfer the fillings to a piping bag and fill each of the combos individually in all possible combinations of filling and cracker. What? Do you know what it is? I'm not a chef. <laughs> Neither am I. This thing no one ever actually realizes. You're I'm not a chef. You're a pastry chef. No, I'm not. Do I work in a restaurant? No, it's not. Making pastries? 